And back and in to action. Canada with the five point margin with that good steady bit of control. And as response, again, Great Britain just keeping it within range. Their shooting percentage just faltering ever so slightly as this match is unfolding. But that fast break and well taken from Williams. Needing some support. The quick hands from Freeman have led this one up to Ouellette. And Ouellette will just put it in the bottom of the basket again. And she's now starting to really find her form in this matchup. Very powerful, but very quick. And her and Freeman are really the catalyst offensively for the respective sides. But this is just reaching in on the arm. The Canadians with the foul against it will be an inbound as the referee Celine Villard is waiting for the players to get into position. 14 points as you see the rebounds and the assists. So a well-balanced game from Ouellette. See the strapping on her shoulder. Reinforcement more than anything to feel comfortable. So much work going in, obviously, in those areas. Just wanting to feel as settled. And if there is any irritation in that shoulder, but they get a great favorable rebound here, does Freeman, and comes right back in the lane. And the Canadians will get back into position. They're just trying to get the give and go into love. And it's the foul already, incidental contact before the attempt at the shot. And Canada now with five points clear. The chance to further increase the scoreline. They're just trying to lock up the good defensive work there of Conroy, but a lot of this picking that goes on off of the ball up in the court area. It'll be just a shot that can't quite get the distance there and GB he's the real swing points in the game when you're down by five maybe can increase the lead to seven and then you make a basket and try to bring it within three but not with that particular look so they're the overall team percentages in the shots 33 percent for Great Britain and 41 for Canada that shot clock is inching down. It goes off the rim, which will give them another 24, but it's quickly taken from Great Britain. Poised, set to shoot. And again, just a little too hard at the moment. And those are the small details, a little bit of difference. That is the big difference on the scoreline, but the fallen GB athlete awaiting to come into the match. This is Amanda Yan. She's a 3.0, 28 years of age. Her first action now to replace her teammate, and that's Rosalie Lalonde that will now go out. She's the youngster, the teenager, 19 years of age. So using the full depth, it's a long tournament. And every player of the 12 that are in the lineup, you try your best in which to use them. But obviously, they've been leaning heavily on this lady here. Janet McLaughlin into the center key area. That one will go off the rim. And GB into the very reliable hands of Freeman. She will bring it up, and it's the Love now. Love trying to spin around. She with the bandana. Very confident coming on is Love. And over to Conroy, and Conroy will rattle it around, but find a way in which to get it to the bottom of the basket. Really is a tough defense against McLaughlin. So tall, and that size advantage in that center area. Aggressively coming forward and almost a speed a little too much there working against Great Britain. Canada pick up the leftovers and can they convert this loose change into a real Canadian dollar here. Put this on the board. 
and get that five point margin again. Oh my, what a shot there. Almost just launched from the side winding position. And it's that trajectory sometimes that is what prevents maybe the ball having a chance to fall. It'll just hit the front of the rim and work away so much there. A little bit more arc on that shot from Freeman and it gives that ball a chance to go in, but it's just off the rim and out inside of two minutes now of this third quarter of play. And here comes Ouellette. She of the black headband. And she'll shoot from anywhere. If she gets a look, she is confident enough to stop and pop. Feeding it around to Yan. Yan with her first attempt at a bucket today. And Freeman down that far sideline is just going to work into the corner. So busy. And so agile there with the movement and the passing game. It's her awareness there that really is the key that unlocks this Canadian defense. And this game now back within one. As both sides just getting a measure of each other now, but equally Canada have that big threat on the inside. Janet McLaughlin, not only does she have the size, but she has a level of function as a 4.5, which is to her credit and Canada's advantage. She really can make the most of that and particularly with the complement of her enhanced size over all the other athletes on the floor. It's a significant asset for Canada inside the last minute now. They'll just wind their way across the line. <laughs> and it will be GB coming up with it for Freeman. She would like a last shot to bring this match within one it was within one at halftime will it be the same at the end of three quarters of play the offload to Conroy she tries to attempt to restart all of that movement she's able to deliver just through her core and the shot from the outside the shot clock just sounding ahead of the release play will be allowed to continue and that the end of the seconds remaining and Canada have just pushed a little further ahead now after the three quarters they have a three-point margin now by winning that period 10 to 8. It's now a scoreline of 35 to 32 Canada over Great Britain. And there you see confirmation of it. The Canadians Three points up after three quarters of play over Great Britain. And the shooting percentage, still just the one free throw in the match that belonging to McLaughlin. Uh, it was in the second quarter, but the defensive rebounds really starting to tally up, but both sides keeping each other in check. Just a little bit of a favorable shooting advantage for Canada so far, but this crowd in enjoying it, well energized by the spirit, not only in the building, but obviously on the field of play as well. Both of these teams starting strong and not really needing a second invitation in which to get off the mark in this match at all, as both sides giving as good as they get and some outstanding play so far. Really, the leadership coming from Freeman, from Great Britain, and equally who lets and McLaughlin for Canada. So wheelchair basketball coming into the Paralympic Games in 1960 in Rome. And, oh, it's going to be a quick start for GB. That was the men's side of the tournament, however. The women coming along 
within the decade later. But this is the advancement of the ball from Canada. Now a point up. And this has every feeling that it may require the possibility of extra time. That one point, that free throw shot, has been differential now for the best part of five, seven minutes in this match. And could that be a part to tell? It's the only free throw that has been taken. You expect that there will be more as we get to the closing stages of this match. But it is McLaughlin who's down. She's up right now. And the foul called on the play, but obviously not in the course of shooting. And the Canadian coaching staff, Bill Johnson, the head coach, assistant coach, Michael Broughton, and we didn't see her there, but Katie Miyazaki. And for Canada, taking that right under their own basket in good position anticipating where that rebound might come to but you're seeing a couple of these fouls here where the play getting a little bit more aggressive in these channels as they're trying to carve roots up the floor and you're looking at the veteran of this Canadian side their seventh Olympic or Paralympic Games rather she's also a competitor in other sports as well in the athletics prior in her Paralympic career is Tracy Ferguson, but this is Harnock on the floor right now. It's the offload, the long pass in, does well. Such great body control. And if this goes too, that's just more impressive. But you can't quite get the roll of it. It's just off the front of the rim, but she will, in fact, get another 24 seconds on the shot clock. It just goes off. Steve's there on the bench for Canada. And this just needing to keep those two, ba two front wheels beyond the baseline, but Canada reloading. Nulette with the offload. This much more confident and more fluid from Katie Harnock. She's trying to give this Canadian offense a third dimension. So Harnock has a couple, Jules has a couple points. But the other 31 belong to McLaughlin and Ouellette. And here is McLaughlin back to take it. Settling forward to her running mate, Ouellette. And these two really set the table. In and the contact before she even receives the ball. And that's the two threats for Great Britain, Conroy and Freeman trying to double team. Janet McLaughlin. And there is the aforementioned Katie Miyazaki, the assistant coach for Canada on the bench there in the black glasses. And that will go off the rim. And will there have been contact prior to change this inbound? So much work now going on off the ball. And it is bringing about a little bit of urgency from both sides. Each play and each possession Obviously building towards what will be the end result in this one in the fourth quarter of play now. And the player marking going on all over the court. Through the middle is Freeman. Freeman's going to have to hold up. She's gone right into the heart of the Canadian defense into three Canadian maple trees and she doesn't come up with a sap. It will be now the possession for Ouellette. And off and left the field of play, the upended Canadian. They're going to allow play to continue. She'll work herself into a good position. And then the referee just saying, listen, I'll call the game. You worry about the whistle. And if there is none, then play continues. And Ouellette offers her apologies and 
It's important just to let everybody find their level in the opener and see just how things will be adjudicated. This, the feed in. Oh, that's a great score for Canada. A little bit of dimension as Jules will put up her second bucket. That's Jamie Jules now with four points in the match. And those are the small differences that could tally at the end. The one point difference is the only free throw we've seen from McLaughlin in this entire match. And that's why it's not on even numbers for Canada because everything has been of a two point variety. This for Houlette. To move it on. And the patience again is going to go to the consistent hand. Will they take a shot from there? They do. Canada almost find a way. And the confidence that had come from the shot once prior from Jules. She can't quite get the accuracy, but Conroy, she is very lengthy. She finds the angle, not only the height advantage, too. You see the way her chair sits. It's also really poised for that type of play, being elevated and being a tall option for Great Britain. You see how athletic she is with her speed. And so well coordinated to try and pull up and get that shot, but it's just a little too hard and off the glass. She'll get a couple shots now from the free throw line. And she misses the first one. And it's picked up by Freeman. Not a lot of spin or rotation on those shots, but that really needed to be a basket for GB. They can't cash it in. And here comes Canada in the break, and you see the expression from the British coach. That is so well taken with the right hand curving away from the play. The underload there to the tall Janet McLaughlin, and she will be fouled. But there is the indication prior to that that leads it is the foul against Canada that leads to Freeman taking the inbound here now. But just exceptional to take that ball and almost bundle it into your side and then equally need to keep pushing and keep your speed going to make sure you don't travel with it. And GB have just lost their sights a little bit here as far as their accuracy of shooting in and around the basket. And that is leaving an opening for Canada to really exploit. McLaughlin, just the loft in, is just a little too close to the rim underneath it. And Ulet forces it loose and it jars forward, but Conroy just carving away now through the middle of the floor and across this three-point line, which is hold up and wait for some support. She threatens to make the pass to the inside. This just needing to be careful here. Freeman has done it. But Freeman was out of bounds when she had touched it on the second search for possession it's Canada and a timeout now in the fourth quarter 513 remaining they have the three-point margin over Great Britain and what has been a seesaw back and forth and this the two of three taken from GB in the second half already these are the timeouts and the discussion going on it's as much for a breather but now for some instruction Miles Thompson just talking about a little bit more offensive control from Great Britain, not rushing the shot. They have looked a little bit hurried in their last few possessions, and that's giving a little bit of a sense maybe of offensive panic to their game. 